Liam Cahill, how are you doing? Not so bad, Nigel, how are you? Good, I'm good. Lockdown, treat you okay? Yeah, sure it did. Um, it was a case of having to customise, like everybody else, um, you know, fairly tough times there for, for the initial uh, couple of weeks and, and obviously months now, the way it has dragged on. But yeah, it was, it was strange and, you know, unprecedented times for everybody. And thankfully, you know, here, thank God in this house anyway, uh, at home, everybody has come through with a healthy and, and well. So uh, I know a lot of other people have, would have had, um, uh, how would you say, a lot of, um, a lot of misfortune, I suppose, through COVID and what it has brought. So thankfully for me, you know, the bottom line is everybody uh, related to me and, and with me has, has, has uh, remained safe and healthy. It's a bit of an unusual time to get your, your first into county job, where normally people come in and it's training sessions and it's matches soon after and it's regular contact with the media, whereas for you it's stay at home and pause the whole lot and the club game takes over for the first time ever. People call for it so often, and this year it did. Uh, none, I'd say from uh, a GA point of view, an odd one to try and get your head around, I suppose. Yeah, I, I, you know, it was great when the, um, when the, I suppose the clarity came that the club was coming first uh, from from a GA perspective. Like we, we were just so, I think any sport person and, and GA person in particular is just thrilled that that we had matches to look forward to and our games back up and running. And I think, you know, the GA have got it really right in fairness to them with, with the club scene back first. And, it, it, you know, it has really, I suppose, if anything comes out of, of, out of 2020 and COVID-19 is that it's given great food for thought to the GA to get their structures right around making sure that, that you know, the core, the core people in our game, which is our clubs, is looked after and, and that the ample window uh, for, for our club games is there. And I think, you know, it just might be all for look for one of a better word that, that that has happened and and that kind of focus is now the priority to, to try and make it right for for uh, for 2021 so um yeah it's, it was that but from an inter-county perspective it's quite difficult when you know you're you're managing from afar at six six plus months now since you've been really getting any real contact with your players say uh, one to one or, or or in collective training so that was a difficult period as well and again un unprecedented times for everybody but we just had to try and manage it as, as it progressed along so thankfully you know there's there's a bit of light now at the end of the tunnel yeah i'm assuming you got to a few club games at least to see some of the players playing for their clubs yeah we've got around to a lot of club games um i suppose up until the the um the last uh, tront of, of um, restrictions came in, Nigel, you know, where, where it was just the, the teams obviously in and, and, and management. So, um, yeah, I got around to a lot of club matches, you know, really happy with, with what we've taken in and what we've seen as a management team. And, um, you know, lots of, lots of real potential there to work with. And, uh, you know, obviously we want to do as well as we can. Uh, uh, now that the championship is, is confirmed and it's up and running but obviously you'd have an eye on, on next year as well with, with potential uh, uh, future you know younger players to come into the squad and strengthen it over the long term so you know all, all is good from that, that respects. I suppose picking up from where you can pick up in terms of the squad would you be kind of intending to go forward with mostly the same structure as what you've come into the orbit or having so much time to stay on and I, I, I don't doubt you've had a load of time to stay on and think as everyone has would you be making change going in early or do you think you'd pick up and, and, and see where things move and adjust as needed or yeah I think I think um, to be fair to the way that the panel we had assembled before um, before lockdown as, as we'll say had um, they put in a massive effort right through the whole the whole um, the whole period of, of lockdown and you know isolated training on their own and that and and I suppose also Nigel with the run into the championship you know their first matches in in five six weeks time it's going to be very very hard to bring in uh, you know new new players uh, straight away and have them acclimatise and adjust to what we're about um, and it might give them ample opportunity to to put their hand up properly so you know the running is so short um, I, I don't envisage the panel changing a whole lot between now and until the end of the year so um, but after that definitely it's 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 a case of, of, of you know going back and looking over everything and making sure that that for 2021 that you're set up properly yeah so with a five, six week running, ideally, how much would you like to have in terms of running in a normal year to actually get prepped and to put your way of playing on the team and to get everyone working well together? Or is five, six weeks enough? Um, 
I suppose uh, with inter county teams now, the players are so accustomed to keeping themselves physically right uh, and in, in great condition. So um, it's really from a hurling perspective to try and get guys back in around you and you know accustomed to what kind of you know game plans and and um, you know styles of play that you want to you want to execute. So. You know, I suppose six weeks is really only 18 odd sessions if, you, if, if you're under under the guidelines from the GEA. So, like, it's not, it, it seems fine, but it's, it's still only, you know, uh, a number of sessions that you have to kind of work on, on everything. So, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's difficult, uh, but having said that, like, it, it's good that it's coming quick as well because mm. things have been prolonged so, so long now. It's just a case of players are just really anxious to, to get back on the field and get out there and... and Glad to have the matches coming quickly. With Cork, it won't be long coming around. You know, it's you'll have a few challenge matches and as many training sessions as he can get in. He said it's 16 or 18 sessions. Big challenge below or up even in simple with Cork. Uh, yeah. Halloween weekend, it's a bit of an unusual one. You know, how often do people get to see yeah. inter-county games that time of the year? But f- first of all, the challenge that that Cork poses to Osford leading into that game. Yeah, sure. Cork or you know, or Cork, they're they're they're. Um, Cork on any given day, if 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 they turn up uh, right, they, they'll they'll beat anybody, and have proven that down the years. I know they they create success in in Cork equally as much as we do in Waterford to to win a Liam, a Liam McCarthy. Uh, but every year Cork, uh, you know, take the stage. They believe they're capable of winning the All Ireland, and if they you know if they come with the, with the quality of players they have at, at their disposal at the moment, they, you know they'll have every reason to believe that. And they will be a, a difficult opposition come the 30th of October. Like they, they have a lot of a lot of youth, a lot of good young players, a lot of pace, and and they have experience as well. Don't forget that they're after winning, you know, two of the last three Munster Championships as well. So, and they have a lot of young players there with Munster Championship medals over the last couple of years in, in their back pockets. And um, you know they, they, they'll come with a great chance. So we'll have to be absolutely 100% ready to make sure that we're, we're able to take them on. In terms of your style of play, so. Again, as I said, you know it's, it's going to be your first stab at inter-county games. You obviously, you've done 21 pre- experience previously, but now it's the big show for you for the first time. What kind of stamp do you want to put on the team in terms of how you want to approach the game or how you want to play? Like, what, what's what's the, the pardon the the throwaway phrase? What's the Liam Cahill philosophy? Well, you know, I think my philosophy won't be a whole lot different to a lot of other managers. Our principles will be will be the same. It'll be about. Um, Having a you know a, a fit team on the field, number one, that you, know, you have to be you have to be uh, able to get around the field now in inter county hurling. It's it's no longer a case of of playing in in the one position throughout 70 minutes of hurling. That there's so much movement involved now that fitness levels have to be through the roof. Um, and you know our ability to be able to um, you know to be able to go go at opposition in in the areas that we feel they're they're. Uh, um, suspect in um, you know to have that personnel I think in Waterford we have lots of good lots of good hurlers that are that are capable of of, um, of playing good attacking type hurling and, and that'll be our, our, our mantra I'd say like we play it, w- it might be deemed as high risk versus what Waterford would have played in the past uh, from a, from a def- defensive perspective but you know it's time now to put maybe trust in players and let's start going toe to toe with everyone and, and, and see what'll happen and look We'll have to we'll have to see what materialises. That could the script might have to be torn up as we go along, and if that has to happen as well, well then you know it's up to me and the management team to make them adjustments as well. So I suppose predominantly we need to be we need to be absolutely excellently fit. We need to be able to uh, hurl as a team and show the Waterford people that that whatever happens, no matter what way results are going, that we're going to we're going to fight to the bitter end and, and make sure that we're, we're leaving ourselves in these tight matches with an opportunity of winning. As well, this week there was an article in the Examiner that spoke about uh, Stephen Lumphy no longer working with you as a selector. Yeah, well, that's that's Nigel. That's incorrect. Number one. Um, you know, Stephen Malumphy, obviously, with with the way the year has 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 materialised and and the whole the whole pandemic of of COVID, um, really, this championship should be over. And obviously, it's not. It's only beginning. So, um, this was something that Stephen Malumphy had well flagged with me and 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 the players um, at the start of the year by where he is he was um, through through his his job in the defence forces was was um, assigned to uh, to work in the UK and uh, you know. Stephen is over there at present, and it's just misfortunate and unfortunate that the you know the championship is is starting. But um, 
you know, Stephen is still very much part of our, our management team and, and, and as, as soon as, as he gets settled in over there, he'll, he'll be able to commute over and back for, uh, for matches and, um, and, and, and training sessions. So, you know, Stephen understands that long term it's not going to work, uh, but up, we're going to obviously, uh, um, you know, keep the status quo until the end of the year and see where it takes us because, um, you know, since Stephen Malofi came into this role, he has, he has given it absolutely 100% and, and I think um, both myself and, and uh, management team and I suppose the county board deserve that. He, he deserves that much from us that, that, he, that he's allowed to see out the year with us and, uh, and then we'll sit down and we'll see where we go from there from a management perspective. But to state that he was not part of, uh, not, not no longer part of our setup and, and, and not part of the management team is, is, in, is incorrect. That was, that was never the case. To move on to then when, when the games do actually kick off for us, Semple Stadium against Cork, any team in any big stadium in the country with inter-county matches pageantry that goes with it and packed stadiums, loud fans, it'll be the first time anyone sees inter-county games with a quiet stadium and I know we'll have 200 people allowed but in the likes of Semple or Parky Cueve or 200 people is as good as nobody in terms of yeah. the atmosphere that can be created. What yeah. do you think the experience would be like going into those stadiums with yeah. quietness? Yeah, it's, it's, it's the, all these players, well the majority of, of, of players, inter-county players would be accustomed to playing in front of 40, 50, 70,000 people or, Crow Park. So again, as I said from the start, this 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 whole you know pandemic and COVID has just thrown out unbelievable different scenarios to us all. Uh, just not just from a sporting perspective, every way from 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 life to, to to business to to health to everything. So you know, it's a case of just being, I suppose, being grateful that we have games and accustom yeah. ourselves to it. You know, I don't think it's going to. How would you say? Uh, dampen the intensity between the lines in any way. I think for anybody that will be viewing it, you know, through the through the telly from, from, from their sitting rooms will will see all of what they'd see in in, in Championship Hurling uh, previously. So yes the, the the crowds won't be there but at the end of the day it, 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 from a player's perspective I know that they're they're one hundred percent committed and the championship will mean equally as much to them as, as ever. So um you know, we just have to accustom our minds ourselves to it, Nigel, and get on with it, and, and that's it. At the end of the day, I don't think the crowd ever really had a massive bearing on a game. Obviously, when you're kicking for home and the crowd crowd are driving you on, it, it does it does inspire you, inspire you that little bit more. But having said that, look, fellas have to accustom to it, as I said, and just get that little bit more ruthless, crowd or no crowd, you know. Last thing for you before I leave you go. When you have your first game in charge and you're you're officially on the sideline as 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 the top man, what are you looking forward to most? Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the players uh, perform, bringing out what 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 they've done on the, on the training field. That's what you look forward to. And, um, you look forward to they've shown their character and uh, and their identity through through their play. You know that's that's big from a manager and you know the trust levels with me getting to know these players is is, is unbelievable. I've I'm, you know, I couldn't credit how, how, how good these fellas are to, to train and how good they are to take direction and the whole area around the, the, the respect they have to play for Waterford and, and for the people over them is incredible. And, you know, they, they really, they really, I suppose, I know you don't deserve, you don't deserve anything. You have to go and make it happen. But, you know, if any, if any team deserved a break, it's these bunch of boys uh, with the way they're preparing. And I just pray that they're able to portray that out onto the field. And if they do, you know, they'll, they'll, It'll be an exciting year, and they'll give themselves every chance of of uh, uh, winning silverware. And you know, every day I walk the line with these fellas, I, I believe I have a chance. I believe I have a chance of winning. Uh, I believe this group of players are capable of winning the All Ireland, and uh, I wouldn't be in Waterford if I didn't think 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 otherwise. So um, that's that's where I'm coming from, and we'll have just to wait and see and see how results will, will um, materialise as as the the next 13 weeks progress. But hopefully. I'll be sitting down again maybe the first week or second week of December having having a chat with you leading up to the last two of the All-Ireland all going to plan. Hopefully. Hopefully. Dean, thank you very much. Okay, thanks Nigel. Good stuff. Thank you. WLR, Imro Local Station of the Year.